what up guys welcome to another episode of philosophy of survival <laughs> okay <laughs> damn I gotta wait till that clears off well anyways I'm losing daylight I'm gonna build a uh, um, slingshot out of this piece of crepe myrtle fork this is actually off the piece of uh, or one of them anyways one of the uh, crepe myrtle staves I had for my uh, bow and uh, this was one piece on the end I cut it off all right <clears throat> so I chopped away on it there for a minute with the uh, bandsaw. Got a little more, a uh, little more uniform, but uh, not really. So I'm gonna get it to the uh, rasp. Of course, this. So we'll go ahead and put this one into work here. I got a, a line on the other side. Basically, I want to carve a hand scoop in it like this. It'll come down a little bit. So this part of the handle stays thick. It'll come down and uh, come across there some kind of way. I'm trying to match this plane to that plane and make them even. So let's see if I can do that with this draw knife. have a pretty grain for a slingshot just like the bow. Another one of my favorite uh, carbon devices is this. Alright so now I just sat back here I got comfortable and I'll uh, sit here and carve me out some junk. I uh, kind of making this totally custom for me for myself. Um, it's a nice piece of crepe myrtle, you know, so I was uh, carving in some finger grooves. And uh, I got a little spot right here for the thumb. My thumb will go right there. I cut a flat spot right here for my palm. It'll go right there, and I got a little notch there for my other finger. Now all these other fingers fit perfectly in here where I carved that. So I'll be able to hold it up on my three. Pull it like that, and this is perfectly swelled for my thumb. And I should be able to hold it like that and pull back and get a good grip on it. If not, I can take that whole thing and come down just like that, and it's still a you know old style dri grip. All right, guys. So after a whole bunch of uh, whittling and sanding, this is what I ended up with. <laughs> just kidding. This is my other slingshot, and. Uh, you see I just drilled a hole through there, 3 8 hole, and uh, stuck me a, a steel ball in there, and that does pretty good. But uh, the asymmetrical of this, see how it's, you hold it straight and it's kind of off to the side. It's a little wishbone shaped. And uh, so, anyways, that's why I started making this other one. But this is pretty good. These are just marksman bands from the academy you know pretty good I don't have no problem pulling them back that far so I think I'm gonna get some TheraBand or something for this one I'm making now and uh, so I'm gonna cut I'll probably when I get the TheraBand I'll, I'll cut an inch of this off so it don't look so goofy it'll look more like that so this is gonna be pretty good I'll uh, get it all sanded and finished and uh, We'll shoot it. Maybe I'll just drill some holes in it real quick and we'll shoot it real quick before the sun goes down. Because I don't really care about it. This is going to be a beast to uh, <laughs> sand. This thing's been laying out here in the yard ever since I made my crepe myrtle bow. So it's pretty wet with all the rain we've been having. And sanding it right now is quite challenging. It's, it's wanting to just fuzz up. So, But anyways, it don't matter what it looks like. It's going to be badass at least it's symmetrical you know well, this part so it looks so goofy being long like that but it's gonna look nice when I cut it shorter all right guys later all right guys what's up I got uh, I went to the store and got these uh, true mark bands now if anyone's ever used these true mark bands 
you know they freaking suck because not that they suck but they got this hard hard plastic thing that's joined to the uh, band on the end and that will light you up every time you let go and that thing comes around and knocks you into knuckles with that hard plastic so we're gonna get rid of that and just unroll them from there take that off now you'll notice whenever you take that off that you have a uh, end that's conform to that it's a little bit bigger than the other end which is the end you're supposed to slide on the you know the wire slingshots all right so then we'll take a needle and just a needle to get some heavy thread this is actually b50 bowstring but you can use artificial sinew or something that's strong and narrow like one strand of bank line probably work and uh, just tie a good knot i'll tie a figure eight so you got your band in the middle Okay, now this is the wide end, the, the flared end, and I'll come in here with my needle. And I've learned a needle works better than anything because if you try to cut this and do what I do, it, it uh, always seems to rip out. Come back about three-eighths of an inch and poke from the outside in, but not through the other side. And then turn your needle and come straight out of the end like this and pull it on through come through here and choke down on it real good now you got that about a half inch choked I'll take and turn a half hitch and choke it one more time like that that's just a little extra insurance because we're about to be pulling the crap out of this. Of course, you can skip all this by just getting the TheraBand. <laughs> but uh, I was ready to shoot my slingshot today. So. All right. Let's see that. Once you got your thing in there like this. Then you just slide it on down, making sure it don't roll up. So it's good to grab it like this and just kind of pull it on down. And you can lube that up with some spit or alcohol or whatever, but you don't really have to. And get it down there and make sure it ain't all crumpled up on your pouch. Now, I'll go do the other side, making sure I come through the same way. So. So you got the full side on this side and then the crimps, the pocket side on this side. I'll do the other one, making sure when I do it that I have both of these punctured sides on, on this side. This side will look just like this, not like one like that and one like that. So that's it. That's my bands. Alright, then when you get done you'll have a nice band without them hard plastic things that are going to wreck your knuckles. And uh, this is how the daisy ones come. So if you want to bypass this whole thing, pick you up some daisy bands at Academy instead of these true mark ones. And it'll already come like this and it'll save your knuckles tremendously. And uh, that's just a tip on how to tie them. If you're just buying the TheraBand bands, the tubular ones, it's a good way to do it. Don't ever cut them. Just use a needle to poke through them. And then that way it'll keep them from ripping as bad. I've never had any of them rip out by using a needle. So there it is. So good to go. Hockey haul there. That'll be enough for the whole job right there. Take a little douse of that. I've already stuck it through my holes that I made which were three eighths. And, uh, just put a little dab right there. A little dab, oops, <clears throat> and a little dab right there. Okay, this should be all you need. Now I'm going to use these, uh, all right, that's funny, okay, use these 3 8 true mark steel balls, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to just stick that in there because of that alcohol. Yep, this is a quite the chore if you decide not to use alcohol or if you decide not to use alcohol I'm not really sure what you would do because I don't
think you'd ever get them in there. If you know something better than alcohol, leave me a comment. I figure alcohol will dissolve pretty quick and hopefully we'll be shooting this in a little bit. I like to put them back about a quarter inch, three eighths, whatever it is. Check it. Check your pocket. If your pocket happens to be off or whatever from any discrepancy, you can take and squeeze this one a little bit more to make it even. And the thing about the way this is, is if you decide you want your, see I'd rather have my pocket like that, that's okay. It's no problem, you just turn it over and you can twist it and get it just right. And uh, I'll give it a couple minutes to uh, for that alcohol to evaporate and we'll go outside and shoot this bad boy. This thing's good right here. So, there she is. The Phil Crepe Myrtle Special. <laughs> See, making stuff that's your own stuff is really rewarding when you get done with it. I'll probably stain it and then uh, tongue oil it. That'll be good enough. But there she is. All right, let's go see what she does. Okay, I made me a slingshot target over there. And I'll be shooting over there about 30, 30 feet away to that Gatorade bottle hanging. You see that? So I've got a cardboard box with a carpet hanging back there with a Gatorade bottle hanging off a string. So and a big shed for a backdrop so hopefully I don't send one of these marbles straight through the uh, shed if I miss which I probably will I never shot these size marbles I just picked them up at the store but let's see what happens I hope that, I hope that alcohol is dry this is where you, you gotta be nervous <laughs> So I hit it twice out of that whole run, but whatever, it's good. I like it. So nice. <laughs> it's a keeper for sure. I like how you can choke up here, and it's nice and uh, ergonomic here with this. You can wrap it around to this cutout, this groove I cut, and hold it really nice and secure like that. And if you had to hammer lock, hammer grip it, you can do it that too. Which I never did. I shot the whole set like that. Really stable. And you know that thing's not going to slip. So, alright guys, thanks for watching. Later. Alright, let's see if it'll stick in this, uh, stick in this, uh, crepe myrtle. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I'd like to thank uh, Yorks Bravo for following me on uh, Google Plus and the little dude from Art of Weapons. And I seen him carve one out. I said, man, I got to do that. So thanks to Yorg and uh, the Art of Weapons dude from turning my uh, slingshot building into something like this, <laughs> from something like this to something like this. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out.